Okay, hi everyone. Um, thanks for joining me today. I'm just talking about importance of CPD, and I'm going to try and make it quite a quite a quick, time efficient presentation um, because I'm hopefully just giving a very simple message today. So, uh, first of all, if uh, if we haven't met before, my name's Neil Statham. Um, I work at Heartland International School, and I wear a few different hats uh, in my day to day. So I am head of PE first and foremost, so still actively teaching. Uh, I teach from foundation stage all the way through to secondary, uh, so days are varied. Um, as well as being head of the department, I am seconded onto the senior leadership team this year. So on my remit um, are things like student leadership and innovation. So it's been a, a particularly busy time with uh, digital learning, um, but a rewarding one as well, and one that's been full of personal and professional growth. And more important than any of those things, um, I am a husband and father. You can see there my, my wife and my two girls. And I think throughout this, although I'm going to be talking about the message of personal and professional growth, it's important to never lose sight of the at, at what expense and at what cost of the pursuit of growth and should never be at the cost of family and relationships. So although, although I, I like to try and drive myself quite hard and I encourage my team to push and grow and develop, hopefully never at the expense of what's really important in life. Um, so I just want to start by... Sorry, Neil, completely agree with that. Would you mind just popping your presentation full screen for us so we can see it a bit more sure. clearly? It's okay. Yep. Brilliant, uh, thank you. There you go. Cheers. So just something to think about um, as we get rolling on this is attitudes to CPD. Um, and I think the teaching profession gets a hard time on it. And I think sometimes it gives itself a hard time. And you, you often see comments when schools have got in-service days and training days, and uh, people think, oh, you know, teachers have got all this, they've got so much time, how can they how could they possibly need to train more? But no one's got a problem with doctors doing professional development, and nobody's got a problem with lawyers doing professional development. And the approach to those is, is totally different. And sometimes teaching, I think, gets caught in this situation where if not done right, people can see it almost feels like a hindrance sometimes or if meetings aren't effective or it's not done in the, the right way. Um, it doesn't do what it's supposed to. It doesn't professionally or personally develop you. Then your attitude towards it starts to change. But my, you know, to go back to my, to go back to my previous slide here. Um, for me, life is it's a personal and professional growth is kind of linked to my, my views on life, really. And I think life's about it's about adventure and it's about experience and it's about growth and it's about sharing those with people around you in meaningful ways and to try and bring some of that aspect into my professional life when I think about personal professional development and how I want other people to experience it around me as well um, and I think when I think back to times in my life when I've been least unhappy or felt least fulfilled it's been because I've been in a, a stagnant environment of some kind whether it's been work or whether it's been something else happening either challenge is gone or is too great or support is gone or is, isn't right or quite simply uh, perhaps I've just stopped growing I've stopped developing as a person I've stopped investing in, in myself so what I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hopefully convince you to do is to make an investment in yourself as the sort of best and most wise investment you're gonna make as a teacher um, and I'm gonna give you some ideas of possibly how you can do it quickly and how you can do it cost effectively as well so um, in any school, there's going to be different CPD models. There are going to be the priorities of the school. So, you know, schools will work hard to try and identify the development needs of the teaching community as best they can. Um, and that's challenging having, you know, sitting on the other side of the table now, it can be difficult to plan CPD sessions that are effective and useful for everyone. And, you know, it is a challenge, but schools will do the best they can. And every school does do the best they can to use that time as effectively as they think. They, the other part of it is that your own professional development and that's the most important part for you to get right and i think that's the most important part that i want you to think about and think about how you develop and i want you to ask yourself the question really how much time do you spend on yourself and your own development um and you know we, we've all we've all experienced cpd sessions like this in in some way and sometimes these things are just avoidable sometimes sessions have to be reactive it's just it's the way of it depending on what's going on at the time sometimes there's got to be an element of firefighting and if we don't plan it right um personally sometimes that lack of strategic approach or the reactive only or the fight fire approach 
it, it never really gets you anywhere. It might solve you a problem in the short term, but if we constantly operate our professional development personally in this kind of way, then we're never going to get that growth that we're aspiring for. So I just want you to ask yourself a question, really, and it's a question that I try and ask myself quite often is sort of, where am I and where do I want to be and what is it I want to do? And, you know, if if I look at some of the questions that I've got written down here, you know, what is it that what is it that you'd love to do at work and how much time do you spend doing it and how much time do you spend developing it? And, you know, what do you love to do at home when you're not at work and how much time do you spend on it? And can you bring up some of what you love at home into work? Um, to what extent are you developing your passions as a professional, the things that you are really interested in, the things that you really care about? And if you're not developing those things, then it's time to start thinking about investing time in developing those things. Because as a teacher, there's nothing wrong with uh, choosing something that's slightly outside of your wheelhouse or slightly outside of your field to develop. If it's something you're passionate about and you invest time in it, it's going to grow you as a person and it's going to grow you as a professional. So I think the most important conversation to have with yourself is, am I doing what I want to do? Am I learning about what I want to learn about? And hopefully if you're at this conference now, you, you are one of those people, you've had that conversation. If you've not, I'd encourage you to make time to do it in your own professional development. Think really clearly about what is it I want to do? What is it I want to develop about myself? And not just what is it I'm not good at that I'd like to get better at, but what are my strengths? Um, that I can maximize what can I build on and to come back to you know what am I passionate and what am I interested about and before I, I come to this slide it's really important that this is planned and structured and I will come back to that um, later on I, I'm not advocating an absolute uh, an absolute carry on of just everyone doing whatever they feel like all the time there has to be some planning and rigor behind it but I'm encouraging you to think freely so some ways you can go about starting it if you feel you've fallen off the professional development horse, if you feel like you're not growing in the way that you used to, here are some of the most obvious and easy free ways um, I've used myself to reboost or re-energize. Um, there are an incredible number of free webinars which are happening out there at the moment. There are so many great blogs. Um, lots of presenters who have, who have spoken today have got blogs. Mary Myatt, um, a big fan of, has got a great website and a mailing list even which sends articles, points of interest, reading out to you. There's the Twitter community. Um, there are so many links to websites, blogs, webinars on there, all that are happening predominantly for free at the moment as well. And the the one in the top left is perhaps the most radical uh, idea of all is that conversations with other teachers that where time is set aside to talk about things um, that might improve your practice or things that you're interested in is so valuable um, and I, I talked about this with Ollie and Mark incidentally and um, we talked about what webinars and processes like this and conferences sometimes the best conversations you have are the ones backstage and just before you go on and our school principal is a big believer in that as well and sometimes some of the most innovative and best ideas come from when you just make time to sit and talk not to not to necessarily plan not to necessarily respond but just to get together with other people and share the ideas that you have. Um, we, we've started a podcast in our school for staff personal development and we've just sent the first episode out and I've already learned so much even on topics I thought I was quite familiar with just purely because I've sat with a diverse range of people, a, a co-presenter and two speakers and we've shared our ideas on it um, and the learning that comes from that is extraordinary. None of these things cost money. Being Doing it in part of a community is one of the most important things though and if you, you can you can develop on your own of course you can but I think um, when I was running over this presentation with one of my uh, one of my close friends who's the school librarian and I told her what I wanted to talk about um, and she she pointed me towards this quite important point and I think one of the reasons we have to do this as a school community is that it's easy to fall into the sort of confirmation bias trap when you're doing your own PD and I do it all the time, <laughs> I've done it today. I have an idea that I think is right or a, a concept that I believe in. And I read more articles that just reaffirm my viewpoint. And then I come across one that goes against what I think and I go, well, no, <laughs> this is wrong. 
the ideas that I have are, are right. So I'll just, I'll continue on with those. So it's really important that you don't live in that echo chamber and that you find yourself, whether it's in your school, whether it's online, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's Teams calls, a diverse group of people to discuss these ideas with, your theories with and your plans with. And I've got the silver bullet on there as well, because um, you know we all love the, there's no such thing as a silver bullet. But it doesn't stop you looking for it and it doesn't stop me off you know i often come in with what i think could be a silver bullet and of course it, it of course it never is but it's great to be able to talk critically about these things and that is important professional development and if you're you know if you're feeling unfulfilled if you're not feeling the way that you want to feel it could be that that's something you could add easily into your practice um to come on to the leadership bit uh, I, i've used the old growing plant uh cliche picture there but it, i think it's as good as an analogy for this as any. Um, how do I use professional development as a leader? I try to I try to think that I use it to support growth in my team as much as possible. Um, I think it's really important as often as you can as a leader to, once you've had that conversation with yourself, is to sit down and have that conversation with the people that you're working with and the people that you're leading and be in tune with where is it they're trying to go? What does the journey look like for them prof professionally and personally? And what is it that they're interested in developing and working to develop it alongside them? Um, and I think as a leader, you, you've got a responsibility to develop the people that you work with as much as you can. Um, I'm just turning over my notes to this, but because I've gone, I've gone for the, the potential versus self-perception and uh, I think in the, I think it was Matt's presentation earlier on. He talked about um, knowing when to push people in your team, and I think it's about it's about knowing when for sure, but it's also about knowing their personality and knowing how much scope people have to develop and finding the right mechanism to encourage them to grow, to take on new opportunities, to speak in events like this, even if they might not feel ready. If you know that person and you lead them well, you you can have a feeling that they are ready, and if you support them right, you can be helping to push them. And I think that, you know, I've written down accountability as a key thing here. And I do think as a professional, when you're developing this way, and if you want to take more control and agency for your professional development, it's important that you do do it in a structured way. It, it's like anything, any form of self-improvement. If you if you just decide that you're going on a diet and don't really have a plan around it, you're, you're sure to crash an exercise program. We've all started with an idea, not formalized it, not set proper goals for ourselves and crashed. And personal professional development should be no different. It should be structured. It should be written down as goals with timelines, with milestones to achieve and in a structured way. So there's actually a clear path on how to get there, because if the idea is great, but the path isn't there, then this will fall victim to any of those other failures that we've just talked about. And I do think if you can if you can make those goals um, as part of a community and use accountability in that way, it can be a really positive, uplifting experience. So if the, the accountability, not just looking at it from a point of, well, if you, do, if you don't do this by this deadline, then <laughs> bad things are going to happen more that I'm part of a community and we've all agreed to go away and discuss this. So we'll come back together. So I need to make sure I've done the reading because these are the people who I've set a common goal with are working hard. So I need to work hard as well on my own and be a valuable contributor to that discussion. Um, because growth in teaching is not a set path and I think it's important to remember that. And when we're talking about CPD, that we cannot just have too many uniform structured CPD programs because there's lots of people who've got absolutely no interest in being a year group leader or a head of department or a head of subject or an assistant head or anything like that. And that's absolutely fine, there's no problem there they've all got growth potential and they've all got ideas and skills to develop and they can be developed in ways that aren't just following that set path but it's about having those conversations and getting in tune with what are people's hopes and aspirations for it because ultimately this should be you this should be this should be job satisfaction from development and from personal growth um, and that's <laughs> in the words of Forrest Gump that's really all I have to say about that so I hope um, if that's spoken to you, if you haven't felt so fulfilled in your development or your personal growth recently, and if you are interested in ever discussing ideas or having conversations about some of the things that I've talked about there, then 
please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I will I'll talk ideas with you until the until the end of time.